for seven years. This was the type of underwear I was wearing every day, and this was the type of pajama bottoms I was wearing every night to bed. Now, I had some different colors and variations, of course, but what they all had in common is they all were primarily made of the same material. Polyester. Okay, now some of you guys are probably laughing at me right now, and some of you guys are probably intrigued. Both of you pay attention. But in all real, for those several years, I didn't notice I was having any potential issue wearing these types of bottoms pretty much around the clock. I mean, they were comfortable, they fit well, they moved well with me, they wicked away moisture. I thought it was just all roses, rainbows, and cotton candy. That is until I dove down. The natural versus synthetic fiber rabbit hole. And well, ever since then, I switched my underwear, pajama bottoms, and the majority of my clothes to natural fiber, mostly cotton and some other natural fibers. And well, I've noticed some differences, some positive as well as some negative. I'm going to share those with you in this video and the compromises I had to make along the way. Let's dive into it, but you got to focus. Anyways, before we go into this video any further, I want to make it clear, none of this is intended to be medical advice in anyway. And none of this is intended to be fear mongering in any way. It's just some very interesting stuff I came across and have experienced throughout this last year researching and trying out for myself natural fibers pretty much only. Also, with that being said, I do want to say I'm not intending to put down any brands out there, any brands that make clothes with synthetic fibers. I do think there are still benefits to these synthetic fibers and I will get to that later in this video. But also, I do wanna say I've noticed some of these brands, big and small, have started to come around to the natural fiber side, which is very exciting. Maybe soon there will be more options for natural fiber clothing, which would just be great. Anyways, natural versus synthetic fibers. What am I even talking about? and why might it matter? So what's even the difference? Well, typically when we reference things that are natural, we're talking about things that are found in nature. And then when we're referencing things that are synthetic, we're typically talking about things that are man-made. I know an argument when you think about it, really everything is derived from nature. I mean, the most popular synthetic fiber in the world, polyester for instance, is, well, what is it? So polyester, is a synthetic fiber made from petroleum-based chemicals. If you think about it, petroleum, that's essentially natural, so it's derived from something natural, derived from the earth, but where the difference really lies, in my opinion, is really how refined things get, and how refined they get with chemicals that have been very refined as well. Whereas natural things, natural items, are way less refined, way less steps away from their very first natural state. With that being said, some popular natural fiber examples include cotton, probably the most popular, wool, silk, flax linen, hemp, etc. Whereas some synthetic fiber examples would be the most popular polyester, but also spandex, acrylic, nylon, polyvinyl chloride or PVC, typically like that very rain resistant, water resistant material, and the list goes on as well. But still, why does this even matter? So let's just go back to focusing on underwear and pajama bottoms. My dudes, first of all, what's the most absorbent part of the male body on the outside? What's the most absorbent part of the female body? It's in the downstairs region. Now that you've got that in mind, if you look into synthetic fibers and look at what various global organizations and foundations have to say about them, well, they believe synthetic fibers might be a large source of the release of microplastics into the water system and then thus into aquatic life. Now, aside from this environmental argument, what I'm thinking when I see this is that you're telling me these synthetic fibers are a large source of microplastics and if I'm wearing underwear and or pajama pants made of these synthetic fibers in a region that is the most absorbent on my body, well then just do the math. I mean, the whole entire concept of avoiding microplastics has become all the rage recently. You know, everyone's trying to drink out of more glass bottles, you know, put their food in glass containers instead of plastic containers, et cetera, et cetera. But all the meanwhile, on the body, in the most absorbent region, a lot of people are wearing microplastics essentially. All right, but say you're not a microplastic junkie and you know what, you're not going to be able to avoid all the microplastics, I mean, they're everywhere. You're probably gonna do yourself more harm just being afraid and stressed out of microplastics than you know, just accepting and trying to minimize smartly. 
obviously. So it's like, oh, okay, well, polyester underwear or not, and you know, in the most observant region. I mean, really though, it's on the outside, uh, whatever, right? But then I came across this second thing. So the second thing is actually several studies I came across on both humans and animals, I believe dogs, where they made them wear basically like a polyester underwear thing or sling or something like that. And they made them wear it for a long time. Well, I believe it was like around 130 or 140 days where they noticed in the human subjects, they basically became, how can I say this appropriately? The swimmers, the males swimmers. Well, they weren't swimming too good, no mo. And they concluded that this was somehow due to wearing the polyester around this region. And they actually didn't even know for certain what exactly it was about the polyester that caused this to happen. But a couple of ideas were maybe to increase the temperature too much for too long down there. And that, you know, because you want the temperature at a certain temperature, a little cooler than the body to have good production. Well, maybe it was just too hot down there for too long and that caused this effect. And then there was also another theory about polyester's electrostatic potential. Something going on with static electricity and the microfibers and the unnatural synthetic fibers of polyester causing, I don't know, some kind of reaction you guys can read into these studies. But in summary, the results of these studies, to me, was like, oh no, oh no. But that isn't all. Now this third reason is where things get messy. You see, apparently there have been several reports where researchers have tested various fabrics from various manufacturers and they found that these fabrics were laced with various potentially harmful chemicals. Chemicals like PFAS, heavy metals, flame resistant chemicals that might be harmful or cause irritation, pesticides, BPA, and the list goes on. Now this gets messy because this was also found in the natural fiber clothing as well. In fact, if you look up cotton, it's actually known for being the dirtiest crop in the world. That's because of the large amount of pesticides they use to produce this crop. But luckily there are some ways to help avoid this. So first of all, there's organic, organic materials like organic cotton, organic linen, etc. So organic in this instance, very similar to organic food, just meaning grown without the use of toxic persistent pesticides and synthetic fertilizers. Now, of course, that doesn't mean it's guaranteed to be completely free of any toxic substance, but in my opinion, it can definitely help minimize. But now on top of this, there are actually various organizations who test fabrics for harmful substances, and if they pass their test, then they get these certifications from these organizations. Some of the most popular certifications that I found searching around myself were OEKO, OKO Tech, Standard 100 certified. I'm sorry, I don't know how to pronounce that. I'll just up there. Apparently this organization tests textiles for harmful substances with apparently the largest prevalence worldwide according to Wikipedia. For instance, I have a pair of these cotton shorts right here I actually got at Kohl's in the clearance section. Well, they have stamped on right there the Okotex Standard 100 certification. That's just another little barrier that you can look for, give yourself peace of mind, and hopefully help avoid any potential harmful substances that might be in just a standard cotton like those are, or even an organic cotton, because like I said, both could be culprit. Now there are actually a few other organizations as well. Another very popular one that I found when searching for pure natural fiber clothing was the Global Organic Textile Standard or GOTS. Now when looking into this, I don't know if their tests are as vigorous for harmful substances as the other one that I just mentioned is, it kind of looks like they might be more about the work environment and just the way the cotton is harvested, produced, and whatever, just making sure it's organic. But still, at least there's some kind of certification backing it throughout the production process to hopefully minimize any contaminants in the material at the end process, right? Now, in my opinion, it doesn't have to have one of these certifications. It's just a, a good peace of mind and it's like at least it has been tested, right? In my opinion, there are other things that haven't been certified by any organization that are probably just as good, maybe even some better, but then maybe some worse. The certification is kind of just like more information to help make your decision on your purchase, right? But another thing I did do when making various purchases throughout this last year, trying to purchase this pure natural fiber clothing, especially going to various websites, I would always kind of research what they were about and their slogans and kind of like the promises they were making about their materials, 
whether they were third party tested or not. And yeah, in a lot of instances, just taking their word for it that they hopefully wouldn't let much slip through the cracks. Trying to be a purist, I know that can be naive, but as you'll see based on what I found at least, there's very limited clothing types, fits, styles, etc. And I had to make do with what I found. But with that being said, it's time to dive into what I did over this last year. My experience trying to search, buy, and wear only natural fiber clothing. The compromises I made, the positives, but also the large list of negatives as well. Let's get into it. Welcome to my wardrobe. Well, actually, this is my wife's stuff over here. This very organized section over here. This is my stuff, so let's just focus over right here, okay? Jeez, this should organize this better. Great. The first downside, as you can see, based on my experience, is there really has been a limited amount of like styles, fits, and even just quantities of these natural clothings that I've been able to come by that I've been able to find comfortable to wear. But for now, let's just go back to the pajama bottoms and underwear because that's where this kind of all started. So regarding the undies, first of all, I actually ended up trying on so many different types, so many different pairs from various websites. And if you know, it's already hard enough to just find a new pair of underwear from a different brand that you're used to wearing, regardless if it's natural or not, that still fits and feels as good as the previous pair that you liked so much. Because my old synthetic pairs that I was wearing all the time, I felt like they just fit so well. So when I switched to trying to find natural fiber underwear, diving in as pure as I could because it's the underwear, it's on that region, right? Trying to find underwear that was, you know, just organic as possible and just free of anything synthetic, like including the waistband and stuff. Well, I came across several different pairs that I was trying in the early stages. And while I was like trying to force myself to just feel comfortable in them, cause I'm like, oh yeah, these are natural, they must be healthy. Well, for the most part, most of the pairs I tried, they just didn't fit me right. They were just so uncomfortable and I just couldn't get used to them. They were just too like, you know what I mean? Like too, like, uh. So I actually was struggling to find a comfortable pair of natural fiber underwear. That is until I made a trip to Kohl's and in the clearance section, I found these Kelvin Klein underwear that were not organic, but were 100% cotton. I didn't even see any certifications on there. I don't know if it was or not. I didn't see any. I just, I just saw that it kind of looks a similar shape to the ones I used to like to wear that were fully synthetic, but these are cotton. It's a compromise to my wild hippie brain, but I decided to go with it. After buying them, after trying them on, I was like, dude, that's it. They were just far too comfortable not to be the underwear that I was gonna go with until I found a, maybe a more organic solution later, which I actually eventually did, and I'll get to that in a minute. But for the most part, for the first couple of months, it was those Kelvin Klein 100% cotton underwear, excluding the trim, obviously, that I just found fit the best and felt the best for underwear. Now, I actually ended up getting super lucky on the pajama bottoms. On a routine trip to Kroger, they had a little section of pajama wear and I was just kind of curious, checking it out, looking into some of the pajama wear, reading the tags, 100% organic cotton. That's right, 100% organic cotton pajama wear at Kroger, nice and simple. So I bought a pair, I tried them on. They fit perfect, they felt perfect. Very similar to the old ones I used to wear that were fully synthetic. In fact, in my opinion, even more comfortable. And the wind even gets bigger, not to boast or brag too much, but when I went back to Kroger, they were doing like a season change or whatever, how they do. And all this stuff got moved to the clearance rack and was like on super sale. You know, they put those tags like was 10.99, now like 2.99. So yeah, I literally ended up picking up like so many of these dude like most of my clothes are actually these so in summary for the first couple of months my go-to underwear were these Kelvin Klein 100% cotton underwear excluding the trim and these 100% organic cotton sleepwear pants or shorts by dip which is a Kroger brand and after a couple of months of wearing these that is when I first started to notice some benefits one very surprising. So the first benefit, I pretty much noticed this right away. And that is just feeling like I was doing something healthy, healthier at least. In other terms, pretty much a placebo effect. Unfortunately though, for the first couple of months, this was actually kind of it. And I actually concluded that, well, that must be it. You know, it's a placebo effect or something very subtle, very, very subtle that might happen over the long term. That's just so subtle, it won't even make a difference in the end. But you know what, I'm gonna do it anyways to make a point, take a stand, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh boy. But 
Then, a couple of months into this experiment, I started to notice a pattern. Something happening to me way more regularly than it has happened to me over the past several years. This thing that was happening to me happened in the morning when I would wake up. How can I summarize this appropriately? A couple of months in, I started to notice I was waking up more solid in the morning consistently. Now, all jokes aside, some of you might be laughing right now. Some of you might be like, well, like, how do you even know that it was correlated with the clothing? How do you even know that it was more consistent and whatnot? Well, this is embarrassing to admit, but over the last several years before I went on this journey, I wasn't really waking up solid often, much at all. I thought it was just something that was like, oh, after I'm um, you know, 30 or so or whatever, 28, 29, it's just something that's gonna, you know, just it doesn't really happen much, I guess, like whatever, right? Um, it still functions if I needed it elsewhere, but waking up in the morning, like I, I just get it's so, circle of life or whatever. But then when I started on this journey, I started to notice consistently, nearly every morning, probably five out of seven days a week, I was waking up solid. You know what I'm saying? If this was somehow having a positive effect on the region down under, then I would probably think it would be more due to the pajama wear because my old pajama wear was 100% polyester that I would wear every night for years before doing this experiment. So yeah, I don't know if it's just some crazy coincidence or if there was actually some effect going on here, but with the evidence at hand that I experienced, I was determined to continue this quest. So wearing the natural fiber underwear and the natural fiber sleepwear were a must for me after this point. But what about the rest of my clothes? Well, if you saw the video I posted a little over a year ago when I first dove down the rabbit hole, unfortunately, my initial approach was a little bit of an overreaction. I ended up basically getting rid of like 90% of my clothes. In my opinion now, this was actually a mistake. It was a waste, a waste of money and a waste of time buying those clothes in the first place and then now having to search for new replacements for those clothes. But that's just what I did. I got rid of most of my synthetic clothes and then trying to replace them with only natural fiber clothing, this is where I discovered a ton of downsides based on my experience. So the downsides I experienced on this quest. First of all, on average, especially when buying organic cotton clothing or any clothing with organic in it really, I noticed on average the prices were just way on average higher. Now, of course, there are luxury brands that might use natural fiber, but also might use a blend of synthetics or all synthetics or whatnot and still have a very high price, of course. But what I've noticed is it seems like with synthetics, you can definitely find an abundance of super cheap items, but then it also goes throughout the entire spectrum as well, of course. With the natural fibers, or at least the organic fiber stuff, there are some cheap options like those Kroger shorts I got. That was just pretty much luck, but a lot of this stuff, a lot of the bulk is constant concentrated in the mid to high pricey range. So yeah, just less options overall, but the bulk of the options are typically at a higher price, more pricey. I mean, for instance, this pair of organic underwear right here that I actually just recently stumbled across, and these are my new go-to daily drivers when I'm not working out. I'll get into that why in a minute. But yeah, these are 100% organic cotton with like a coconut button, crazy, right? But this one pair cost $30 and I have three of them. So three pairs of underwear, close to $100. But then again, you know, like I said, there's some other luxury brands out there where if you weren't even paying attention to the fabric type, you know, probably could be even more. The second downside that I discovered quite quickly, less styles, less chances for a good fit. First of all, it was very hard to just find something 100% cotton or 100% linen or something like that. But then luckily we have the internet. Searching for this stuff online, I found various websites. Two that I actually really like, raw organic and wear packed, but I also bought a lot of stuff over the last year from like these wholesalers as like samples. For instance, like this sweater isn't really even necessarily branded, but I bought it from like a print company that would print on organic wear. And this was a sample that I got to try. 100% organic cotton. Still paid the basically premium price of a sweatshirt, which is like around $30, $40. 
Uh, but you know, it's like, is it gonna fit? I, there's really no return policy there, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, less chance of a good fit, way harder to find a good fit, at least in my experience. Now the next downside of these natural fibers that I discovered based on my observation is not as durable as the synthetic fibers for the most part. For instance, I have this sweatshirt that's literally probably 15 years old. You guys have probably seen me wear this. And I think it's a blend of synthetic fibers. The tag actually totally disintegrated off, but I remember this being at least 50% polyester. And I mean, it's been through so many washes. Like, look at that. It's thinner for sure. There's a mini hole in there right there, but 15 years of wearing this to the gym, break dancing in this thing, or breaking in this thing, b-boying in this thing, washing it countless times, and it's like still together. Where on the other hand, I have this cotton shirt right here that I bought about a year ago. It's like completely disintegrating already. Now this next downside, I quickly realized when trying to wear only cotton bottoms. So not just the underwear or sleepwear, but also finding and wearing cotton pants to the gym, out and about, doing activities. So just fully cotton bottoms aren't that flexible compared to some of the synthetics and synthetic blends. And from my experience, not as moisture wicking, which is huge. You know, if you think about it, cotton is actually like moisture absorbent. You know, that's why you have cotton towels because it absorbs the moisture. So putting this into action, trying to find and wear only cotton pants to the gym from my experience over the last year, first of all, it's kind of uncomfortable. They're not that mobile, you know, they're stiffer, but getting going, just ignoring that, getting into it, once I'd get sweaty, cause I'm a sweaty person, they would really absorb the sweat, get heavier for one, but probably the worst part is it would just really show the sweat where it's at. And if I'm getting sweaty in the lower region and all over the place, it's kind of just embarrassing, you know? Whereas if I'm wearing something like 100% polyester, like these other pants I used to wear all the time, well, like they don't absorb the moisture like that. It, it wicks it away. You can't see where you're sweating. So it's like, yeah, I'd much rather wear that. So yeah, I did determine I probably overreacted in getting rid of most of my synthetic wear and I probably should have kept more of it because it had its place. Moisture wicking, flexibility, a little bit more comfortable for some various activities like going to the gym and stuff like that. So wait a minute, you're telling me after all this, after everything you've been there and said, you're still back to wearing synthetic clothing on the bottoms? Yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I am. But not all the time, just when I feel like the benefits outweigh the potential downsides. And that is typically in the gym or sometimes just out and about doing activities. The best analogy I came up with to justify how I'm going about things here is that whole escape the matrix philosophy that's infiltrating the internet over the past couple of years. You know, bro, you've got to escape the matrix. You've got to get out, you've got to escape, right? The more I thought about this, the more I realized, haven't any of you seen The Matrix? The best part about that movie wasn't them escaping The Matrix. It was them going back into The Matrix, taking advantage of their knowledge of The Matrix. What I'm trying to say is it's not always about escaping a matrix. It's about having knowledge and then being able to make decisions so that you can best take advantage and optimize with the resources at hand. Taking advantage of the matrix. That's my motto. I'm, I should start a whole thing. I should sell programs, eBooks. I guess where I'm going with in conclusion is I tried to make the switch to natural fiber underwear and natural fiber sleepwear. In doing so, at first I didn't notice anything. Then I noticed something pretty profound, which I am correlating personally. I'm gonna correlate that with this. Let me know your opinion, but I do think it has something to do with this. So in that instance, I'm definitely gonna continue down wearing organic or natural fiber bottoms, underwear and pajama wear for that matter. But when it comes to working out for that moisture wicking and flexibility mobility purpose, I am going to occasionally wear some of the synthetic bottoms that I saved that I luckily did not get rid of when I did that purge a little bit over a year ago here. And then going forward for the underwear, I actually did retire my Kelvin Kleins and I've now moved over to these even more natural. These are fully organic um, luxury underwear. I'll leave the exact name up here. I got these from Raw Organic. And like I said though, they're $30 a piece. So I actually only have three pairs of these. But yeah, when you put these on, you can just tell they're 
yeah, pretty natural, you know what I'm saying? But I noticed like the Kelvin Kleins and the old underwear I used to wear were more brief style. I've kind of been going over now to more boxer style. And yeah, these ones out of all the ones I've tried fit the best for being the 100% organic cotton underwear that I'm wearing going forward from now on. Now I actually do have another pair here that I have switched over to wearing these on workout days as underwear. These are from Pact, Wear Pact. These are their organic cotton boxers as well. The reason these ones had the design on them is because they were having a sale on these like four packs and some of them had to have silly designs. I like the design, I think it's cool. But the one thing I wanna point out about these, these packed ones actually have 5% elastane in them. And elastane is basically spandex, which is a synthetic fiber. And I've come to the conclusion that I am okay with making that little bit of a sacrifice. <laughs> Some of you guys are thinking I'm so nuts. Going from trying to go 100% cotton, or in this case, 100% organic cotton, to a little bit of elastane, wearing these specifically when I'm going to the gym working out, because that elastane just gives a little bit more flexibility, a little bit more mobility, a little bit more maneuverability, and even breathability. It just feels even cooler down there, which I think is actually better overall than trying to avoid that elastane and maybe going something like this because I tried to wear these to the gym before and it just gets way too hot and way too soaked, Ugh, you know? Yeah, so I've decided for myself that a little bit of elastane, if it's gonna make that big of a difference in comfort, is going to be okay. And I've been wearing these for a little bit over a month now and I haven't noticed any effect in waking up solid, let me just say that and I haven't noticed any other effect otherwise. And then I am still wearing to bed. I think this is probably the most important part because in my opinion, this is the biggest drastic change for me. These organic cotton sleepwear to bed coming from the 100% polyester sleepwear that I was wearing. So that's how I've concluded now. My opinions can change, but right now I'm thinking synthetic fibers are not all bad. They have their place. I'm gonna try to minimize, but not totally neutralize. In my opinion, plastics can be great. They can absolutely be great. I mean, look at my eyewear. Oh my goodness, yeah, these are mostly plastic, but they're light, they're durable, they fit right. This couch, probably mostly some kind of polyester material. My socks, that's another thing I didn't even touch on. Oh my goodness, it's so hard to find, it's almost impossible to find just a full sock that's not laced with some kind of synthetic material. Because yeah, just so much mobility and durability. Now you can get wool socks, but you know what I mean? This is just so hot. and. It'd be very silly to wear those, especially in the summer months. But yeah, without making this video a million minutes long, I hope you guys found this very interesting. I wanna throw one honorable mention in there, and that's my favorite article of clothing this entire time. It's actually a t-shirt. It's actually the style that I'm wearing right now. And it's actually from Roganic. I gotta say, I gotta give it to them. These 100% cotton grown, made in the United States of America, the Sonoma Tea. Now they're like close to $30, which, you know, it's kind of pricey for a t-shirt, but they're like, you know, that heavy shirt that's in right now. There's no big brand on there or anything like that. And uh, I mean, in the USA, you know what I'm saying? I just thought that was awesome. And uh, a shirt, I know after we just talked about underwear and sleepwear for mo the majority of this, the shirt is actually my favorite article of clothing that's organic. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you were entertained. Please share with me your experience what you guys know and what you guys might recommend regarding natural fibers or heck, even synthetic fiber, like anything. Just let me know what your thoughts on this video are and I appreciate you for watching. Thank you so much. Don't forget to subscribe, turn those notifications on. More videos coming out. Peace, I will see you all in the next video.